this is my presentation. Uh, you know, I, it's going to be about uh, navigating Spectre Meltdown at one year removed. Uh, my name is Greg Bates. Uh, my, my Twitter account is PensRule82, and believe it or not, I have a blog now. These, uh, if, uh, if I can figure it out, these, these slides will be on the blog later sometime, hopefully. So, agenda, got to have an agenda. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about who I am, uh, what Spectre, you know, go down Spectre meltdown memory lane. Uh, how do we patch it? What are the uh, VMware mitigations, the struggles along the way? Uh, we'll talk a little bit about foreshadow, and then overall, uh, how do we know we were mitigated? Some lessons learned, maybe a, maybe a pull, and uh, hopefully, uh, definitely, beer talk later. <clears throat> All right, so who am I? Uh, my name is Greg Bates. I have been a server engineer at Reed Smith uh, for well over 10 years now. Uh, basically, I'm in charge of uh, Windows environment, VMware, and physical server infrastructure. Uh, it also entails a lot of the Windows and uh, VMware patching. Uh, just a little disclaimer, the examples in this presentation are not necessarily uh, about Reed Smith. They are sort of an aggregate of all multiple experiences. So what I am not is a CPU architect. I, I'm just not. I'm also not a, an expert on cybersecurity, although I have been known to play the part in, in meeting rooms. <clears throat> so this is, this is a warning. You know, uh, this, this may remind you of, uh, of a stressful time in your life. So if you need to, to leave now to avoid being uh, triggered by uh, poor patching uh, situations and, and overly complicated diagrams, now's, now's the time to, to, to take them to, to leave. All right, so I mean, who remembers, uh, you know, when, uh, when Spectre Meltdown came out? You know, we've got, you know, this uh, was released on, or publicly released on January 3rd last year. Um, I know from experience it, it felt different right away. It was a different sort of uh, vulnerability. Um, and immediately we had uh, patches from Microsoft Red Hat, uh, VMware. You know, they all, they all got out there right away. I thought, okay, this is, this is different. This is big. Um, Intel uh, comes out with their microcode for mitigations. And, uh, you know, you've got your OEMs releasing their, their firmware, BIOS firmware, all that stuff. So just a little review, in case you forget what's affected. Just about everything, <laughs> some more than others. All right. <clears throat> so right away we find out this isn't like other uh, vulnerabilities. This is pretty complex. Uh, we, uh, we see that uh, Microsoft's got all these uh, dependencies on, uh, on different things. They've, they immediately have a dependency on the antivirus. Uh, you know, you can't install the cumulative patch until you patch your antivirus first. It's like, that's new, that's different. Uh, then you find out that there's also some registry keys you've got to edit afterwards just to enable the mitigation. This was brand new at the time. It's uh, really confusing too. Uh, not a lot of documentation right away for it. Uh, VMware, uh, also extremely complicated. You got to do uh, the virtual center patch, you got to do some host patching, uh, you know, then you needed some extra steps just to mitigate uh, the, the VMs themselves. <clears throat> and then, of course, uh, OEMs and their firmware bundles are always, always pretty complicated. But we know it's important because it's got some cute names and, uh, and logos. So. Uh, like I said, complicated. Uh, there's some immediately some confusion around uh, everything. Uh, the in, we find out right away that the Intel microcode's unstable. Uh, blue screens all over the place, purp, you know, purple screens, uh, all the fun stuff. Uh, that causes the, the OEMs to pull their firmware and vendors like VMware to pull patches. But eventually, everybody gets their act together, um, kind of uh, take two on this. Uh, Intel releases their, uh, their, their new microcode. This time, it's stable. <clears throat> uh, vendors then follow suit. Everybody's re-releasing re their patches. Good to go. Later on, uh, we find out there's new variants to this vulnerability. 
uh, this, this time it's called uh, Spectre uh, Variant 3 and 4, which means, of course, more microcode, more operating system patches. Uh, once we get our kind of head wrapped around that one even, come August, of course, now we've got uh, L1 Terminal Fault Variant released, aka Foreshadow, which means more microcode, more operating system patches. <clears throat> Put together a little table. Um, this is just, uh, you know, simplify things a little bit. Uh, these are the highlights. There, there's, other, uh, there's other variants in there, but uh, these are the kind of the, the, the big ones. Um, you know, CVE scores on the, on the side there, the uh, uh, alias, what it's called. Um, you know, trigger the, and then the different types of mitigation. You see that there's lots of different things you have to do for the various uh, CVEs. Um, operating systems, uh, microcode, and then even application patching or browser patching. Um, you know, the uh, Spectre Meltdown, the first three uh, CVEs there came out in, in January. Um, uh, variant 3 and 4, they came out kind of later uh, in the spring, maybe early summer. Um, the other ones just kind of trickled in after that, and of course, uh, foreshadow uh, most recently in, in August here. <clears throat> I'll also put together a flowchart for you. <laughs> Believe it or not, this is, uh, this is a real flowchart. <laughs> Definitely, you got your VMware uh, tasks over on the side here, some Microsoft tasks up above there, and, and then uh, kind of the, the, the hardware pieces in the middle. Uh, believe, yeah, believe me, there was, uh, there was a lot of beer 30, a lot of holding your breath, and uh, a couple, uh, couple panic attacks. Which all kind of comes together to, uh, you know, the VMs on the side here, where we finally have mitigation. Maybe. <laughs> All right, uh, moving on to what we need to do on the VMware side. Uh, like I said, it's uh, complex. It's not, uh, not a simple thing. First thing you got to start out with is Patch Virtual Center. <coughs> it's, a, uh, it's a real complex, uh, uh, problem and uh, there's microcode involved and the microcode has to be passed on to the guests themselves. This is a kind of a new thing so the best way to, to kind of go about this is to patch vCenter right from the beginning. Um, it, it, uh, the new patch enables some of the mitigations that allow you know to the, the, v, the VMs themselves. So get that out of the way early. Uh, then you're going to want to check your clusters. Uh, make sure you've got EVC mode on if you want to continue doing vMotion. Uh, once you start to patch your hosts, uh, the hosts are going to want to pass the microcode to the, the VMs. EVC mode kind of levels that off, protects the guests uh, from us receiving that microcode and, and running at different uh, levels. That way uh, vMotion will continue to work. Then we just go about patching. Patch the, uh, the microcode, patch the operating system, patch the security, everything. Get the hosts up to date. Uh, you'll want to complete all the hosts in the cluster before moving on. Uh, like I said, the CPU microcode um, needs to be applied to the, the VMs. They need to understand that so the guest operating systems can, can be mitigated. Uh, but it will not pass that microcode onto them until all the, get, all the hosts in the cluster are mitigated. So guest side, start, make sure, like I said, make sure everything's patched. Um, then you got to make sure that all the VMs are at, uh, or the VMs are at version level uh, nine or higher. Um, that's so that uh, they'll understand what the, the microcode is. But um, VMware highly recommends version 11 or higher, uh, and uh, the reasoning behind it is it uh, enhances the performance um, of the CPU, sort of offsets some of the performance concerns that uh, you have with, uh, with, with the actually mitigation. Um, but let's be real, I mean, we should all be at version 11 anyway. Uh, that's ESX 6.0 compatibility, um, so it's just, let's just get there. <laughs> uh, let's see, then you need to shut down the VM and power it back on in order for the uh, microcode to be visible to the guest itself. Um, you know, it, this, is, this is the hard part because you gotta get an outage for your VM. Um, all that stuff. You get a cold restart. I highly recommend at this point uh, scripting this, working with you know, PowerShell, however you want to do it. Um, there's been some great talks on here, uh, you know, at, at these VMUGs in the past about uh, scripting. There's some good minds in this room themselves. So 
hit them up. So early on, there's uh, a lot of struggles. Um, kind of touched on it a little bit. Um, you know, right from the get-go, the dependencies pretty crazy. Um, you know, you got uh, Microsoft with all their dependencies with the AV stuff, the registry keys, VMware with theirs, uh, with the virtual center. Microsoft's actually dependent on VMware itself in order to pass the microcode on. Uh, it, it, it was pretty complicated. And then we had to explain it to people uh, as, as administrators. You had to explain it to management, had to explain it to your security team, you had to explain it to the other application teams. It was, um, it, it was pretty rough, especially if you didn't understand it, they weren't going to understand it either. And of course, uh, the performance concerns. <clears throat> uh, you know, there was, uh, there's a big fear in the industry about what kind of uh, performance segregation was going to happen when we did mitigate it. Um, uh, Intel was saying, Microsoft was saying, it's not a big deal, it's, it's only 10, 15 percent, it's only a couple workloads, you know, very few workloads will actually have to see a problem. Uh, but it was a fear, it was definitely a concern. But the worst was probably the delay in patches. You know, Intel had them right away in January, but it wasn't working. So then they had to take them back. Um, and then they started to release them again, this time stable, but they released them in batches. They started with their newest CPU, um, then they sort of moved down to the older CPUs. I don't know about you guys, but I had a mix of CPU, you know, servers in, in, my, in, in my farm. And I could patch some of them, not all of them. Do I patch the, you know, VMware piece? Do I patch them? Do I wait? It was, it was a confusing time. Uh, and I think, if my memory's correct, I don't think uh, we even got a patch until April for some of our you know, CPUs. So, pretty confusing. At this point, you know, we're feeling pretty bad and, uh, you know, all-time low of uh, confidence going on. But, more struggles. So, uh, you know, boggy firmware. Um, I can't express enough how horrible upgrading firmware is. But, uh, you know, you're not just, you know, this time you got to patch the microcode, patch the BIOS, but, you know, they don't want you doing just that. They want you to do it in bundles because that's what's approved and that's what works in their labs, <laughs> not in reality. So you got to patch you know, the, the array controllers, you got to patch the ILOs, the management controllers, everything, which kind of leads you into all the dependencies around the hardware. You know, first you got to check to make sure it's on the HCL VMware or Windows. Um, you know, make sure that everything's working within the hardware environment itself. Um, do your management tools break suddenly? Um, you know, how about the onboard administrators, virtual connects, the fabric interconnects, all those pieces need to kind of line up. Turns into a large project in and of itself. I know there were a couple nights where I was really debating why did I buy this hardware? <laughs> <clears throat> VMware had struggles as well. I know I personally, uh, we had a mixed mode. Um, we had a Windows Virtual Center and a uh, you know, VCSA 6.5. We were in the middle of a migration. Um, we couldn't patch the Windows version right away because VMware didn't release a Windows version for the, the Virtual Center. So when we were doing the migration pieces, when we were mitigating, this slowed down our project significantly. Yeah, it was difficult um, to, to kind of kind of move on. The, uh, there were some bugs and features within Virtual Center as well that, that made it kind of difficult. Um, I know one of the bugs uh, was when VMware pulled back their, their patches from the, the buggy microcode. Uh, I update manager uh, database corrupted. But you don't know that until you have a patching window in the middle of the night. Suddenly nothing's patching. That's fun. Um, another feature which uh, I kind of hinted on was when you have your clusters patched and you cannot add a host into the cluster unless it's at the same microcode as, as the hosts that are in there, which is great except when you're literally migrating old hosts into new virtual center, that becomes kind of troublesome and you've got to work around that. So that was fun. 
Then came Foreshadow. Released uh, just in August uh, last year. Um, of course, more Virtual Center patch, another Virtual Center patch, more operating system patches, and more microcode um, uh, necessary. This time, uh, the performance considerations are serious. This isn't a joke. Um, it's not that 10 to 15 percent that uh, that you may notice. This is uh, you know 20 percent overhead that you probably will notice, especially if you're uh, got a busy farm. They wrote a really nice uh, KB article on it, explaining everything, explaining the seriousness of it, and uh, you must run this particular tool to kind of analyze your cluster. It's called the HD Aware Mitigation Tool. Um, it will go into your virtual center. Uh, per host, per per cluster, per VM, just to you know, run some things, you know, get spit back a report telling you whether or not it's a good idea to actually enable the mitigation or not, uh, which is a new thing for VMware, uh, which you can install the patch but not enable the mitigation, sort of like what Microsoft did. You can actually do the mitigation right from that uh, that Power CLI tool. It's actually really, really useful. Uh, the, uh, the mitigation is called ESXi Side Channel Aware Scheduler, which is really just a fancy name for disabling hyperthreading. <laughs> so how do you know if you're mitigating? This also is not very easy to figure out. Uh, I've said all these things. Did you do them in the right order? Did you do them at the right time? Did you actually complete everything? Microsoft's got a nice tool. PowerShell module that they, they created. This is their official response to how to figure it out. Uh, speculation control. Uh, all you do is you run this on the guest. It will look at the microcode, look at the patches, see if it's enabled, and give you a thumbs up or thumbs down whether or not you're good to go. Very handy, works really well. Um, definitely use it. Uh, but that's one guest here and there. You know, how, can you run it on all of them? Maybe. The vulnerability scanners. I've seen it work uh, in some, you know, some cases. Would say that it's not 100% accurate on these. Uh, a lot of it depends on whether or not it can actually see the end of the servers or not. Some community scripts out there. Uh, one uh, that I've been tipped off to is uh, vDocumentation. Um, it is a uh, PowerShell module that, uh, you know, that was written to document your environment. Well. It can also pull reports and it actually will dig into um, the configurations of your hosts and VMs and, and report back of whether or not the mitigation is, is good or not. Uh, you would run it against uh, Virtual Center, it would pull a report on all the hosts, it will give you, uh, return the, uh, mid, uh, the CPU microcode level, the patch level, um, and a lot of other really good stuff too. And it will also do the same thing for the, the VMs. It can tell whether or not the VM version is correct, whether or not it's been rebooted and the microcode's being passed on to it. Um, and it'll, it'll kind of put it off in a, a really nice uh, spreadsheet. I, I highly recommend taking a look at this. Uh, it's it's uh, really helped us out. Uh. So, lessons learned. It's been a year, hard year. <laughs> what have we learned now? Don't panic. Not saying that I did, but there was probably a couple sleepless nights I had uh, along the way. <clears throat> Take the time to explain the process to everyone that needs to know. Uh, you know, management and security team, they can come at you real hard. Are you mitigated? Are you mitigated? Are you mitigated? Well, tell them what you need to do. Explain the whole thing, you know, front to back. You know, say, this is what we need to do, then we need to do this, then we need to do that. They're a lot more understanding once they realize how complicated this is. They're not asking you all the time about it. It's just a real quick, hey, what's the status on this now? And they understand. So don't get frustrated uh, by the unreasonable concerns. Just go ahead and uh, explain it and, and see how it goes. Do the research. Uh, so many good KBs out there, so, many good, so much good information, but sometimes you have to dig into these things in order to find the details. The, uh, um, the Microsoft KB is poorly written, kind of hidden with uh, a lot of their stuff. You know, so you, you have to look at the registry keys to get that information. There's multiple registry keys. Did you know that uh, 
There's a different registry key for mitigating spec, uh, Spectre Variant 3 and 4. Yeah, it, they changed it up a little bit. <laughs> so it, it's kind of important to, to, to do the research. Test, I mean, do I need to elaborate on that one? <laughs> and then uh, monitor the community. Um, lots of good uh, forums out there. I know my personal uh, go-to's right now Reddit and Twitter, uh, but there's a lot of great forums, a lot of really good minds out there. Uh, a lot of good minds in here too, and you just uh, kind of find out what other people are doing. More lessons learned. Keep your equipment up to date. Not necessarily bleeding edge, um, that could be a problem to addict to, but uh, you know, relatively up to date. Next time there's an emergency patch, there's um, less dependencies and uh, less pressure around. And don't put it off because it's complicated. Uh, security is the most important thing in IT right now. Um, just get it done, get it out of the way, and you'll probably learn something in the process. Thank God this is all over. <laughs> We're all mitigated. Everything's fine. <laughs> all right. Uh, this is where I would usually say that there's a, we'll have some questions to answer, but I think we have a you know, little form afterwards. So instead of doing the you know, questions, I figured we have a little fun. Um, I don't know if you've ever done one of these before, but if you go get your phone out, go to pullev.com. It's going to ask you for uh, a username and uh, type in Greg Bates 004 and we're going to uh, do a little poll. It's going to be an online thing. So, as ready. What is your Spectre meltdown patching status after what you've just learned in this uh, thing? You know, have you completed everything? Are you almost there? Did some, you know, did you do your part, somebody else has theirs? How does this work? As you can see, this is live data. And Ariel really likes to push different buttons. <laughs> Are we raiding his jersey? <laughs> no, I should have put that one in there. <laughs> yes, question. It's uh, Greg Bates 004. It's also up there. <clears throat> and you can text too. I haven't tried that, but. Frankly, I'm just surprised that anybody put all done. <laughs> the line's moving. It's moving a little bit. I have no insight to this. I don't know who's doing what. I, I don't know how many we're up to. So this is just sort of for fun. I'm glad to hear that nobody's saying anything about melt, what is Meltdown Spectre because I just got done explaining it. <laughs> Thanks, guys. <laughs> so everyone's clearing their last response. <laughs> now you guys are just playing. <clears throat> I think. Uh, it looks like the majority have, uh, have, have almost completed. There's, there's some more coordination to go uh, on the current parts, but uh, you know, I, I would say that I think most of the industry will fall right there in the middle somewhere where they might have done their part and expect it to be done by somebody else, but there really needs to be some coordination involved. So you guys want to do one more? Of course you do. It's, it's on my next slide. What? What was your favorite meme? <laughs> Were you paying attention? <laughs> You'll see everybody's uh, landing on it. We, we can see where you actually put your little, uh, your little icon. It doesn't show up really well. I, I should have tested this beforehand, but <laughs> I think it's pretty obvious everyone, everyone likes explaining it there. All right. That's all I got. Thank you for listening.
Uh, my information's up there again, and uh, I'm sure I'll get these blogs, up, th these uh, slides up on my blog um, if I can figure it out. <laughs> <laughs>